Charleston, South Carolina is an awesome place to visit. If you live in the USA, it's like the perfect weekend trip. It boasts an eclectic mix of history, culture, fun stuff to do, and wait for it, food. Charleston has an amazing food scene, and it's consistently ranked one of the best places to eat in the USA. Charleston is my wife Allie's number one favorite US city to visit. And we recently took a trip there to celebrate not one, but two major milestones, her 30th birthday and her very first Mother's Day. Our mission? eat our way through the city. Literally while that trip was still happening, I polled you guys on YouTube to see if you'd be interested in a video breaking down some of our favorite Charleston eats. And you said yes. While the memories are still fresh, here is my drool-worthy list of our favorite places to eat and drink in Charleston. Before we dive into the list, I wanna give a few tips and disclaimers. First up, I wanna talk about reservations. Not every place on this list takes reservations, but the majority of them do. So try and book reservations for the places you're interested in as far in advance as you possibly can. For this most recent trip, I started booking like six weeks ahead. Next, many of the places in Charleston use a software called Resi to take their reservations. I had never heard of it before going to Charleston, actually. I'm sure it's common in other cities or metro areas. I had only been familiar with Open Table, but you'll wanna check out Resi. And finally, if you're unable to get a reservation at a place that you're really, really interested in, I would still try your luck with a walk-in. It seems like most restaurants in Charleston have a mindset to try and accommodate for walk-ins, or maybe they set aside a couple of tables expecting them. We've always had pretty good luck getting a table at a walk-in. You know, sometimes you'll have to sit up at the bar, but I would say if you find a place in this video that's like, man, I'm so interested in that, and you're unable to secure a reservation, I would still give it a shot. Next, I wanna mention the type of food that this list is focused on. Honestly, there are very few bad bites in Charleston. So anything you get in most cases is gonna be great. However, this list is a bit focused on places with Southern flair. I'm talking about shrimp and grits, low country cuisine, crab, cornbread, fried green tomatoes, you get it. That type of food is very common, very popular in Charleston, and typically with a bit of an elevated take, especially for dinners. There are one or two exceptions on this list. I am not putting down any of the other types of cuisine in Charleston, but this area is very known for that type of cooking, and that has typically been what we've gravitated towards. The last thing I wanna mention is our travel food style. Ali and I have a pretty simple travel style when it comes to a city like Charleston. We like to walk a lot, and we like to eat really good food. And the good news is, Everything on this list is in walking distance if you're staying in the downtown Charleston area. I'm talking King Street, Queen Street, French Quarter, Battery, kind of Charleston proper. And Charleston is a very walkable city, so it's quite an enjoyable adventure if you're planning to hit a bunch of these different spots. Now the way that I've structured this video kind of relates to the way that we might typically eat in a given travel day. I've got a section for breakfast and coffee, I've got a section for cocktails with snacks, and I've got a section for dinner. First up on our list is Miller's All Day. Allie and I make it a point to come here every time we come to Charleston. This place has a convenient address downtown on Lower King Street and specializes in making an amazing breakfast all day. That's what they do. They do it really, really well. I'm a simple guy when it comes to breakfast, so I tend to do their Miller's plate with some eggs and oh man, their grits are so good. Allie is a classic Southern girl, so she got the fried bologna sandwich. One note, they don't take reservations, so know that going in. We put our name on the list, walked around for a little while, and then we actually got a text when our table was ready. I like Miller's because it's an affordable price point, it's got a cool diner feel, and honestly, it's one of our favorites. For a brunch spot that has as much character as it has flavor, head over to Church and Union. Housed in a historic church built in 1916, it's a culinary sanctuary adorned with stained glass windows, hardwood floors, and thought-provoking quotes from Sun Tzu's Art of War on the walls and ceilings. While they do serve lunch and dinner, we have only tried their brunch. We actually did their Sunday brunch on Mother's Day, and it was excellent. So I'm putting it in the brunch category because that's technically all I can vouch for. While we're on this topic, I wanna to mention a couple of great coffee spots. Just a few steps from the city market is the best cup of coffee I have ever had in Charleston at Clerks. 
Clerks is connected to Hotel Emmeline and has a cool kind of relaxing library atmosphere to it and just a great cup of coffee. I don't have much to say. I got a vanilla latte with oat milk, I wanna say, and it was just solid and a very cool atmosphere. One more amazing place for coffee is Biddy and Bose. And the coffee is great, but the cause is even better. The first shop opened in Wilmington, North Carolina with the purpose of creating a path for people with disabilities to become more valued, accepted, and included in every community. And they do this by staffing their shops with individuals with intellectual and developmental disabilities. It's, like I said, a really good cup of coffee, but uh, an even better, just purposeful cause. It's well worth your time to visit if you're in Charleston. All right, on to some afternoon sips, and all three of these are fire. Tucked away on East Bay, just a stone's throw from the waterfront, is an intimate spot with an impressive spirits collection. And it's my personal favorite in this category, the gin joint. The gin joint nails the classics. Ali's Hemingway Daiquiri was on point. And they also delve into some lesser known spirits and cocktails. As a fan of Fernet, a more obscure type of Amaro, I was thrilled to see they had several varieties. And they've got great bar bites as well. We split this mouth-watering charcuterie board. Next up is Bar 167. This bright and vibrant restaurant was quite possibly the best surprise of our recent trip. Bar 167 has it all. Fresh seafood, scrumptious bar bites, and well-made cocktails. The calamari was some of the best that I have ever had. And honestly, it was just a cool place to hang out. Just outstanding. For you craft cocktail connoisseurs out there, might I suggest Dora Bros. With a sophisticated interior showcasing a stunning bar setup, rich hardwoods, and cozy seating, this spot blew us away with its delicious spins on classic cocktails and modern craft beverages. The snacks were top-notch too. I remember we had the prosciutto and the popcorn, which you don't always see, but it was really great. And now for the main event, dinner. A lot of these places also do lunch too, so if you are there for a very short period of time or you can't get a dinner reservation, lunch is a great option as well, and we've definitely done that in the past. First up is Husk. There's a reason why Husk is such a big name in the Charleston food scene. It's a culinary powerhouse, serving up elevated Southern fare in a cozy setting. With a menu that's changing all the time based on local ingredients, you're in for a familiar yet unexpected dining experience each time you visit. You'll love the balance of flavors, the ingenuity, and the finesse in each dish. We started out with the Nashville hot lamb dumplings, which holy cow, were incredible. And for dinner, I had the rabbit, which was basically rabbit sous vide and then wrapped in ham. Allie had the half chicken, which was one of her favorites from our entire trip. If you're up for an intimate and personalized dining experience, our kitchen is the place for you. This hidden gym operates on a unique concept. Limited number of seats, five courses, and the menu is literally different every single day. It is very, very hard to get a seat. We actually did not get to eat there this most recent time, but we did the trip before, and it was one of the greatest dining experiences I have ever, ever had. They have two locations. They have one in downtown Charleston, and they have one in West Ashley. Highly recommend. Next up is a true Charleston classic, I Do Declare. This is Magnolia's, which is an upscale Southern restaurant that's been a city staple for over 30 years, and for good reason. Honestly, based on everything I had seen and kind of heard about Magnolia's, I was skeptical. I was like, oh, that place gotta be overrated. It was great. It lived up to the hype. The setting is elegant without being stuffy, and the food is solid. Each dish stays true to traditional Southern cooking with a bit of gourmet flair added in. I had the seafood grits that had shrimp and scallops, and Allie had a steak. Okay, there's one on this list that doesn't exactly fit the Southern vibe, but for those days that you're craving something unique and a little bit different, head over to Zhao Bao Biscuit. This eatery offers a vibrant mix of Asian comfort food. Select dishes from China, Taiwan, Thailand, and Vietnam with bold flavors in a casual environment. Honestly, if you need a good place for lunch, this would also be a great lunch option. I remember I had the okonomiyaki, which is a savory Japanese pancake. 
And honestly, no matter what you order, you're in for a ride. This place is a small piece of Asia right in the heart of the South. Next on the list is Fig, which is short for food is good. True to its name, Fig serves up straightforward yet sophisticated cuisine. The building itself is really unassuming in kind of an unassuming location. And yet the space inside is sleek and contemporary. We always get the chicken liver pate, which is one of my top five bites in life. I got the slow roasted pork loin and Ali had the chicken with a broccolini puree spread. Given this was the night of Ali's birthday, we also had a delicious dessert. I do wanna give just a quick word on reservations for Fig. Slots open 28 days in advance of the date you're interested in booking at 12 p.m. Eastern time. And they are not open on Sundays or Mondays. We've had some luck getting a seat up at the bar at Fig. They also have a communal table up in the bar area, which I think seats like six or eight, but you might, you know, if you're just a couple, get paired with a few other people, which is no problem. This most recent time, I was waiting for my reservations but I was trying to book for a Sunday. Didn't realize they weren't open on Sundays, but it was one of those situations like I was describing earlier where there was a last minute cancellation. We tried our luck as a walk-in and we ended up getting a table in the dining room just by showing up and seeing if they had any availability. Here's my can't miss from every category that we just covered. My perfect day of eating in Charleston, if you will. Miller's all day, the gin joint, and fig. But every place I mentioned, is a winner. If you're interested in how we research where to eat in cities like this, you'll wanna watch this video where Ali breaks down her exact process of how to find great restaurants on your limited vacation time in a place you've never been to, whether that's Vienna, Austria, or Chiang Mai, Thailand. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next time.